Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a snowy Louisville, Kentucky, and the 18th Derby City Classic. Boy, we got a fantastic match for you today and for the next several days here in Louisville. It is the Diamond 10-Foot Bigfoot Challenge, played on this beautiful 10-foot diamond table. 16 of the very best pool players in the entire world, all going for $16,000 and even more money, and more than that, the Bigfoot Championship. We have 16 great players. It starts with this man from Davio City, uh, the Philippines, Lee Van Corteza, runner-up a couple of years in a row here at the Derby City, also the Derby City nine ball champion. Next up, we have all the way from Moscow, Ruslan Shinnikov. He's the bronze medalist and the world eight ball champion and two-time Kremlin champion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm also gonna hand it over right now to Jay Helford, our tournament director. He's gonna get the lag started here in Derby City. We're excited and gonna send it up to the booth, Mark Wilson, and Danny Deliberto. Take it away, guys. Well, hello and welcome back, pool fans. We're at the 18th Annual Derby City Classic. My name is Mark Wilson. Alongside me is Danny Deliberto. And Danny, of all these tremendous events we have here all week, straight pool, bank pool, one pocket, nine ball, this is my absolute favorite, the 10 ball. Oh, you do like 10 ball best. Oh, uh, 10 foot, 10 foot table, 10 ball. Yes, I do. Jenikoff versus Corteza. What should we look for in this one? Well, I don't know the Russian real well, but I, the first time I saw Lee Van Corteza was at Turning Stone a few years back, and he won the tournament handily, which is tough to do anyway, but he's one of the Filipinos that dominates pool and you know the Filipinos are like the best in the world yeah they have been uh, regarded that way for many years and every year they come over here with uh, a new champion but Jenikoff has won the lag very tall man you don't see very many tall players we're playing a race to 11 10 ball looks like he's in the scratch here Yeah, that's not something you want to do with great players. You usually lost that game. Well, uh, make matters worse uh, in some portion of the next game because they oftentimes can uh, break, make a ball, play a good safety, get another where you're up there kicking for your life or occasionally break and run out. So it's going to cost, on average, uh, probably somewhere around 1.1, 1.2 racks. Yeah, you know, right now you just hope you're only going to lose one. But like you said, it could be three or four, which 10 ball makes it a little tougher than nine ball. That extra ball changes things a bit, but not that they're congested. They're not congested at all. All the balls are open. Well, we've had a catastrophe here in the arena. One of the signage fell off, and there was a cue down. Jay Helfert's going to hold up play. You hate to start off like this because you start off with a scratch on the break, and now you've made one bad shot, not hardly been to the table, and you give your opponent an opportunity to kind of get momentum and a little bit of rhythm, feel of the table, some confidence perhaps. And Lee Van, though we've watched over the years, he's terrific at managing open layouts like this. And he's very consistent. Yeah, he does not create many unforced errors. Jay Helfert, our presiding official, he came out and remedied the arena. Lee Van now. Nice shape on the three ball. And Mark, you've been to the Philippines. And you know there's more players there that can't afford to get here for, that, for this tournament. But they're great players. Oh, absolutely true. I mean, we don't even see Luat and Da Dung and some of the others, the greats that have been here for so long. But there's just tons of players over there that play this speed. Without exaggeration, too, when I say that, I, I'm telling you, there's probably three dozen guys in Manila alone that play Lee Van Speed. And the leader of the pack is here, by the way. I haven't seen him in a few years. 
uh, Jose Perica. He's here. He's not in this 10-ball tournament, but he's been an outstanding Filipino player for many years. And he got here before Efren. That's why they call him the leader of the pack. Tremendous talent. He was just elected into the Billiards Hall of Fame last year. And yes. uh, probably deserved to go in beforehand, but he's in there now. And while it's not something that he was uh, receiving posthumously, so that's good. Yeah, tremendous talent. Fierce money player. Yep. This is a winter break format. They're playing races to 11. And it's single elimination. Ten ball does not win on the break. $1,000 entry fee, single elimination, like Danny said. This is a real tournament. 16000 will go to the winner. 16 players, and you can't just have $1,000 to get in, but you also have to be invited based on having the credentials to belong in the top 16. Oh, right. I, I always hated tournaments where a garbage man only had to put up his entry fee and he's in. I, I think you should be qualified to compete. The public gets a better deal. Jay Helfert's called that, asked to remove the uh, rack template. We are using a 40 second shot clock as well. Looking on the crowd, we got a pretty nice crowd. See Billy and Cardona sitting downstairs. Lee Van Corteza locks in on the 10 ball here. And our festivities are underway now. Lee Van leads the match one game to zero. And as expected, Lee Van Corteza ran out. Ball in hand, no balls were touching each other. So you knew you were dead then. And like you said, you don't want it to join and lose two or three more. Right. You knew you were going to be in trouble with that one. Now this is a new day. Yeah, the actual conversion rate from just a, a break and a scratch is probably near 90% of the time you're going to lose. But then it's the subsequent games. It's a while before you come back to the table and get a good shot quite often. They play a good safety, and then you're kicking for your life. The guy runs out. And uh, you just don't get many nice starts with these great, great players. Rack two just about to get underway. Ivan breaking from the extreme left-hand side of the table. Cue ball had a little hop, went forward, got kissed. It'd be a dry break, and he didn't probably obtain quite as much ball action as he would have liked because the cue ball was hopping when it impacted the one. Pros prefer to hit it with something they call a flat ball, meaning that the cue ball is right on the same plane as the object ball. When you add power, it's very easy to get a little hop on there, so it takes a great deal of practice to hit it that way. Here's our second look at Chenikov. 23 years old from Moscow. Renowned straight pool player. Makes a nice opening shot there. Well, you know he has to be in stroke to come all the way from Moscow to be in this. Plus the $1,000 entry fee. He's won the straight pool challenge here before, and he can, uh, he's um, a tremendous shot maker. Absolute fearless shot maker. And one of our sponsors, these are the balls we're using, Cyclop. And you notice that the... Six and seven are different colors, which makes it a little tough for a commentator. <laughs> you know, we get used to the other ones. Now we got these. And they're good balls. Table's still pretty fast. The cue ball probably tracked just a little further than Chinnikov was comfortable with. Yeah, He's got a nice shot. Yeah, he went three rails. Like it's going to land just a little awkward, Danny. Yeah, 50-yard line, we call it. 
He didn't get directly into one corner or the other. That's why we call it 50-yard line. Looks like he's playing up the back cut, this ball. Oh, boy. The chat. Back in line now. It's going to be stop, stop, stop. Looks that way. First day of the tournament. It's always a pleasure to be here, especially doing commentary with Mark. Yeah, thank you, Danny. Nice run out there by Chenikoff. He collected those balls very smoothly. Ties the match up at one game apiece. They're making it look easy. <laughs> they and certainly there's are. There's people out there that are duffers. Don't get discouraged and quit the game, folks. You know, you can get this good yourself. You just have to play. Like Mizrak said on the commercial, practice, practice, practice. The greatest players in the world, so you're going to see great play all day. I always like to watch and see how many break and run outs. You know, one of these matches, you see two or three of them. That's remarkably good. Super tough standards. The diamond 10 foot table, still a one piece slate, if you can imagine that. One piece slate. Yeah. A special dolly to move it in here. Chenikov set the break now. Rack three. Crushed him. Nice break. Quite a bit of ball action. Yeah. That the six ball got kissed in. Look at this. A cheap win here from a great break. The 10 does not count on the break, so <laughs> bad luck there that it didn't go in for Lee Van. But good yep. luck for Chinnikoff. He declares the 10. It's a call shot. And he quickly captures game number three. Takes the lead in the match. Two games to one. And the balls were pretty tied up. I mean, except for that combination, it would have been a tough run out. Oh, great point. Yeah, great point. So he gets credit for a break and run out. And I don't think it's much different to break and run out from the break. The player who shoots second with all the balls on the table, that's a pretty good run out also. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny how the balls sometimes cooperate with one and leave pretty reasonable, manageable layouts. And then the other guy, when he comes, he'd have to make a hat trick of breakouts to get one rack. But I think that adds that little element of interest and excitement and intensity to these matches. Chinnikov locks down on the break here. Big, long backswing. Good break there. Hope well, he found the pocket with anything, but he did hit them well and got quite a bit of ball action. Now we're going to see a push out. Yeah, we got to see a push out because the the one is tied up. You can't hit the one. Snooker from shooting right at the one, so he's going to have to push out. And this is an art, folks. You know, you got to figure out where to push where you don't leave a shot or an easy safe. So there's a lot of thinking involved with the push out. Even at that, you have to push out to something that's somewhat risky for you to play a safe from too, because if it's a routine safety, your opponent certainly knows and can execute all those shots. So you have to take a chance. And that's why oftentimes you'll hear Danny say he should tie up balls or try to prolong the rack. No doubt about it. Rather than the gunfight. Now this looks like a reasonable push out. Well, do you take it or let or give it back? I don't think that he can see uh, enough of the one to cut it down towards the hanging six. So I think for that reason, I think he will give it back. But he seems w wanting to shoot. Looks like he wants to bank that one ball at the five. The five is not just hanging deep in the jaws. So. No, this is a tough shot. He's gambling on this shot. He made it. 
He made it, but I don't think he's going to like his neck shot. I think he's going to bank. <laughs> oh, it kept going. He does have a shot at the one. Can he get position? Well, he might the, have a cut, too. From the bank, yeah, yeah. From the bank, I think he can get. Yeah, nice shot there. Oh, boy. And this is bank pool territory. I wonder if he's in all the games. I guess he came from Russia. He's got to get in all of them because you're not eligible for the all-around prize money. Of course, 10 ball, that is not included in the scoring for all-around. And you saw Jay Helford a little while ago. He's the one who really is credited for originating the 10 ball big foot. That's what we call this tournament. Chinnikov, while being a very straight uh, shot maker, has a somewhat complex swing. You know, he's got quite a bit of up and down motion in there, a lot of vertical energy. And so he relies upon rhythm and timing to uh, make accurate hits on the cue ball. Once in a while, he gets a little out this, of whack. I say this all the time. Sometimes you got to play position and take a longer shot so you could reach the cue ball. But he is so lanky, he could have been a basketball player, I think. Yeah. I was, I was surprised because I've seen him here a few years and marveled at his uh, ability. He's only 23 years old. Good shot there. Worked the cue ball pretty nice. Close I, to the I eight. Like, I like to see players from all the countries because it's truly a world tournament then. And we do have a lot of countries represented. It. I don't think you got that figure yet, Mark. You usually do. He's found his good rhythm here to start the match right away. Ten foot table is not slowing them down one bit. He now leads the match three games to one. We've seen perfection so far. Yeah, the only mistake was that unforced uh, scratch on the break to begin the match. Cost him a rack, and then Lee Van broke dry. And uh, Chinnikov ran out. And then in the next break, uh, Chinnikov made the 10 ball almost go in the back corner pocket, left himself an easy 110, capture his second win. And then here, from the push out, he accepted Lee Van's push out, took a very iffy bank combination, played the two cushions, made it, got another shot to bank, and then ran out. So I got a second guess that I would have gave the, the shot back after the push. Yeah. Because he barely made the ball. That was near the pocket. He cut it very thin off the rail. Yeah, two cushions at that. Yeah. So that was playing poker. And it, it paid worked. off, yeah, and the ability to cash it in. There's really no sense just making the ball and not winning from it. So here we get a chance to look at his fourth break. Winter break format. Well, he made a ball. You know, I'm pretty sure, if I rem if memory serves me right, it's all ball fouls. Now, I could be wrong about that. But let me just re see if that's listed here. Each player gets a five-minute break. Blah, blah, blah. Match the race to a limit. Well, it doesn't say. So I'm, it is all ball fouls. Yeah. Chinnikov now examining where he needs to push out to because he does not have direct access to the one ball. They have an interesting shot. I've talked about it many times. I think it's a dinosaur that died many years ago, and we still play it just because we think that's the right thing to do. But I think it's really gone extinct, and nobody re realizes that it has very little value, except it complicates the rules to proliferate the sport to new people. And the 2-9 looks tied up, but it looks like a good combination if you can make the 1. Well, here definitely I would not shoot. If position and the shot are tough, give the ball back. Let him shoot it. That's what he's going to do, I think. 
I think he might be thinking about playing safe from here. I think he thinks that Chinnikov will also play safe if he gives it back. Now he can bank this ball perpendicular, but it's easy to leave the green six ball. It looks like he's going aggressive. He's going to cut at it and hoping for the backdoor safety should he fail to complete this. How's his speed? I don't think good. it's any good. No. No, I wouldn't. I would have never shot. I wouldn't shot the ball. I might have played safe. He could have gone maybe behind the seven. Yeah, there's a psychological aspect when you have the option to give the shot back. It's harder to get real committed to a tough shot when if you give it back to Chinnikov, he's forced to play, and it's a little bit easier to be tied into your shot selection. Ooh, good That's stroke. Giddy up on that one, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> very, very I never effortless. did that in my life. Anyway, it's a psychological issue. I mean, the push out and, and all that, you don't want to lose another game, so you're trying to get back in the game, and that works on your head. Yeah, try to force the action there a little bit and don't want to fall further behind not coming to the table, so you take something a little bit too aggressive. It looks like there's a chance he's going to have to pay dearly for that. Well, that's, I call it the seven, but it's the four. No, what is, it is the four. He's shooting it now. Right. Yeah, the, the seven is the robin's egg blue or light blue. Mm -hmm. And Mark named it robin's egg blue. <laughs> well, I guess. You'll be famous now because of that. Meanwhile, he's making it look like a walk in the park. He came prepared all the way from Russia. Left himself a little bit of an angle here. Could maybe just bounce across or go too forward, no, two I cushions. I think go forward. I would go forward. He's queuing at the center. I don't know what that means, going forward. Yeah, that, that's the best percentage to get to that ball. Boy, fell on that angle and stayed, you know, had positioned all the way from the second cushion onward, wherever it stopped. Very routine 10 on the side. Four to one now, Chinnikov in front. Came from Russia in dead winter, figured maybe. <laughs> Catch a break, right? <laughs> Weather -wise. Maybe he got to Louisville, Kentucky, <laughs> and it'll be warmer. But we're having a snowstorm right now, folks. Bad uh, one. A major proportion, five to eight inches, and it was already snow on the ground when we arrived yesterday. Danny and I just beat the bad weather on the road, so we're happy because we're here for nine days, and we figure it'll be clear yeah. by the time we have to go home. I love it every year. I, I get here, put my clothes in the closet, and I don't have to leave again. Until they throw me out. Next Monday. Rack number six now. Jenkoff leading four to one. Much better with the break here. He almost made the ten. It wouldn't have counted though. Dry break. E six. No, he made a ball. Okay, good. Yeah, he does have a shot. Yeah, it's a tough shot. Not a good shot. Right. But he, I got an idea that he's going to shoot. I think the eight ball will help him a little. He went over and looked at the eight as if he intended to play that. Yep. He's going to bank at this. Safe? No, well, he, he played, played the it. eight. Played the combo. <laughs> Not only did he play it, he yeah. made it. This will be a pretty run out here uh, yeah. because of the uh, awkward arrangement of the three, four, five, six. I get all the way to the end rail for the two, and oh, he's going to be in this? trouble here. What's he's this? in big he trouble. He went the wrong path. Got a little bump there. Yeah, he went the wrong path there. I mean, easy to say now. The guy's playing perfect. Now he went the wrong path. Now he's got a kick. No, he's got a shot at the two, Danny. Oh, he does? The, the oh, two's I'm sorry. Down there. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. No, it yeah, actually I, worked out pretty good. Oh, he, I see it. He did pretty well. He could have easily got tied up there between the 9 and 10, but he got just enough bump on the 10 to get loose. Well, he's got a combination next. And now, yeah, good speed there. He's back in line. So. Well, this is easier than the combination he made on D8. 
How do you think? Yeah, pretty fast player here. Well, you're right. He's cruising right through these combinations. This is really the, the last big hurdle here is if he can get position on the five. Oh, he took the thin cut on the five, which means cue ball control is tough. This is a super thin cut, too, because he's just one diamond north of the five balls on the second diamond. And like you said, balls on the third. he's a great shot maker, so I expect him to make this. And he did. And good speed, too. Yeah, you know, he fell pretty good on the Well, uh, maybe six. not. Yeah. Well, six ball might have to go in the corner, Harry. Yeah, you're just right. Just a hair thin. You're right. This shot plays so much easier when you've been at the table for a while, but he's queuing up as if he's either going to roll it for a safety or... No, he's going all the way down table. Boy, Rubs oh it away. Yeah. You called it right when you said he's a great shot maker. Now, does he have a clear shot on the nine? <laughs> Looks like maybe he has just enough. Might have to spin it in a little right-hand English. Put some draw on the cue ball. Boy, he's playing perfect. Yeah, this would be his second break and run out of the match if he makes this 10. Spans his lead, five games to one. Pretty good pool playing right there. Get through a tough layout. It's a race to 11. It's been a very up-tempo match so far. It hasn't been one of these multi-inning uh, Rack after rack after rack type matches, but it's been pretty much one inning, nine ball all the way along. And Corteza hasn't done too much wrong. No, I think he's playing a thousand on the Acu stats right now. He he broke dry is about the extent of what he's done wrong. Well, no, I take that back. Remember he took that the push out on the one yeah. and he shot at it, so and it didn't that turn will out good. I'm a very lenient AccuStat grader, in case you didn't know that, Danny. Just because I have compassion for these guys. <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> I have. I have compassion too, but I'm I'm a little more ornery than you. Got a little side spin on there. Chinnikov breaking here. Made a ball. What kind of a shot's he gonna get? Looks looks awkward, but he's aggressive. I mean, it wouldn't wouldn't be beyond him to try to just glide the one ball into the corner pocket past the four. I think it goes. You know, I, I keep saying this every year. The first day, the table's dry. The cloth is brand new. The pocket will take the ball better than, like, three days from now. Oh, I think he tried to play it off the four and just barely missed completing that. Well, he left the cut on the one. So Corteza has to do some spectacular things to get back in this match. Yeah, there's a lot of awkward balls that come into play if he tries to thin cut this one in there. He well, he's going to he's hit the four. do that, Mark. He is shooting at it. Hit the four, oh, stunned it right. to a stop. Look at that. He didn't get anything. Okay. Well, I think I'd love to have the uh, ability to kind of show what I think he's going to do here if I get the overhead. I think he's going to try to go in here, Danny. Two cushions, soft speed, and just have the cue ball filter out here. That's one option. I like tying the two up and let them go. Ball in hand. But he's going to shoot your shot. He's not only amphibious, he's a rubber man. Oh, look at that He went speed. Good hit. A great hit. Yep. He needed some great hits. Yeah, he needed a little break there, and he got it with a good a, a good decision and good execution. That I don't mean to infer that he was lucky because he was not. That was all by design. And that comes with a lot of rotation play where you get shots of that nature so frequently you become adept and comfortable playing them. Well, he didn't snook them totally. He has a shot at the two. He used the three ball to slow the progress of the Look at the ball. speed there. And he snookered him with the ten ball, I believe. No jump cues allowed, by the way. I think I, they are allowed to jump with their break cue, however. I like that rule. Now, this is my favorite tournament. I love all the tournaments. This is my the one I love the most. How you like that yes. shot? Yes. Looked like it was going to go in the side pocket all the way to He's the point gonna, it didn't. Oh, he left it. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> Poole can quickly conspire against you. Jennikoff. Great hit, however, no reward. Oh, he missed it. Yeah, he didn't even threaten the pocket with that. No, he didn't. He was definitely playing it now. Looks like Levan is forced to play a super thin cut. I don't know about that. I think a safe is a better idea. Yeah, well, yeah, it might be. Well, he took, he went aggressive, and look at this. This is how you get punished. <laughs> he made a good shot, but there was a little risk there, so that's why I thought safety would have been a little better. And I say it all the time: when you got a tough shot in tough position, play safe. This is not bad luck, you know. He made a good shot, but however. Psychologically, though, don't you think he's fallen behind and he's reluctant? He wants to shoot. He doesn't want to play safe. They, <laughs> yeah, that's what I said earlier. You don't gain the game by playing safe right. immediately. And it's been a while since he had much of an opportunity to score or anything. And I think he maybe got just a hair more aggressive than was prudent. And, you know, that's how things can quickly get out of hand. Now we're going to see some shot making. Really, the only shot here to make is the three. I think once you make the three, the rest of the rack looks pretty easy. But this is not easy. This is a 10-foot table. This is really a long shot. He looks like he's queuing up to play safe. No, he went all offense, whistled at home, no problem, effortless. But the wicket, the only thing happened here is the six is going to get, or that's the Robin Blue seven. That's going to hurt him a little bit. That's a little bit of an obstruction. Very smooth cueing action. Not for him. Drives that ball home with boy, authority. Oh well, starting to look like Cortez is going to go behind another game. Yeah, this guy does shoot straight. He really needs to take advantage of this, too, because uh, this is a big game at this point. All these games become so large because they're two-game swings. And, uh, you know, six to one is a way better lead than five to two. Uh, just psychologically, that plays on you, not just the game count, not just the math part of it. I'm guilty of not mentioning it's a diamond Simonis cloth table. You know, those are sponsors, and I got to mention them. And Great deservedly equipment. so, yeah. Hey, Chinnikov wins his sixth rack, leads the match six to one. Boy, he's going along real good. I don't remember any mistakes he's made. He, he had uh, his opening break, he scratched, right? He's shooting 944. And Cortez of 740, 733, but. Well, that's, that really doesn't really portray the full measure because it's still early in the rack. Cortez is not playing hideously bad or anything. He just. A couple slightly errant shots. 850, the benchmark, a pro level play. It's early in the match, but here's what I like to do when I'm playing. He's got to beat. Uh, Cortez has to beat him 10 to 4 to win this match from here. Tough feet. Yeah, very much so. Here's a guy that's playing strictly one inning 10 ball on the 10 foot tail. <laughs> But you can't think like that. All you can control is what you do, and what the other guy does is out of your yeah. control. There's no sense being anxiety-ridden over it. You play every game like it's hill-hill. Well, look at this. This is a pickle part of pool. Guy's beating you 6-1, running out every time he gets a shot, and then he breaks, and you to have this. I don't think he can make this. No, no, and it's, no, it's not. <laughs> you want to shoot at something that's hard to make yourself push out. And you don't even have a good safe. Uh, he's going to kick, try to kick safe here, it looks like. I don't know if this is going to work out. You got a, a very good out. kiss. Yeah, it worked, it worked out. out great. Yeah. 
you just got to be a little happy about that, but not about the score. No, Chinnikov now, there's not much he can do shot playing a shot. He's just got to try to hit this ball. There's, yeah. Can't be too cute with this when it's out in the middle of the table. You just don't want to give a ball hand. That's, that's kind of like your primary objective, even if you leave a shot. Make yeah. them play from where the cue ball lands. Anything is better than ball in hand here. Four is sort of in the way. Oh, he just missed the four. Is a nice look hit. at this. Okay, so uh, Lee Van's going to be rewarded for the risky play he made to get safe. Now he's going to get a good shot. He's got a shot. Position doesn't look tough. Well, do you play the two next in the corner, or do you play the combination? Well, it doesn't go by the 10, I don't think, but it, but it might because he did go look at it. We'll see. The, yeah, the, if you play the combination, it's, you can it's easy to mess ball. up. Yep. Yeah, that, that, that makes it real tricky. That being said, it might be the best of the tough options here. Yeah. Now he's got this little angle, Danny, and now position off the six, getting back on the two. That, that could easily be real tricky. Well, how far will the cue ball go if you play the combination? You got to hit it on the full side, which he did. Great speed control. That's a great shot, yeah. especially when you're behind six to one. Very controlled. He had uh, super soft speed. That opened up the rack. Now he has a, a chance to win this game. Classic Filipino style here. Conservative position routes. Oh, no. He had a chance to win a game, and he missed the ball that he figured he, not to miss. He worked so hard to, to, to get to that spot. Well, how many players are there in Russia now that are top flight? I mean, we used to have... Uh, Evgeny Stalib came here a few times and he's a Russian player but we haven't seen him lately look at that he made it off the ball but the ball was there that object ball helped him to be aggressive speed wise but now because he overcut it the cue ball got away just enough yeah, got plenty it's going to be tough to get position if you make this ball not even easy to play safe. He's not easy to make the ball. Yeah, I got to play safe here. Yeah. Played it in the corner, and, he, and it's not going to save him. Although he got position. However, playing position, you got to make the ball your shot. Stay to the table. Isn't that brilliant? And sometimes you get position when you miss the ball because the cue ball goes slightly different. But Right. Everything would have been different. Uh-oh, trouble. Watch out, side pocket. <laughs> oh, boy. Never a doubt. That was scary. That was really, uh, you know, other than the scratch and the break, that was Chinnikov's first real dramatic error so far. And he's absolutely cashed in all of his opportunities leading up to this point. Well, I think the error was shooting the ball. He could have played it safe. Oh, look at this. With a bridge, yeah. The yeah. cue ball, I don't know, didn't squirt as much as he thought or something. But, hmm. yeah, that's uh, that's going to be devastating here. He had a chance to get back within four games, and now could easily fall behind six games. Not a lot required of Chinnikov to collect this one. Both players are fast players, too. That's a bit more entertaining for the crowd. Yeah, I the like that. Shot clock really like hasn't that. even come into play. Uh, 
I really think the, the 40 second shot clock is, is really the answer in, in all pool games. Uh, makes it far more entertaining for the spectators to not have a I agree. drag out. I totally agree. Chinnikov cashes that in, leads the match seven games to one. And, and Danny, I don't know if you remember, but I'm a slow player, and 40 seconds is ample. Really, most all my shots uh, occur between 15 and 20 seconds. It's just a real fast player plays between 10 and 15 or 8 and 15. I'm just a hair slower than that, but it looks slow because I have a slow backswing and it's long. But really, even 30 seconds is uh, rarely ever a problem for even a slow player. It forces you to make a decision, too. Otherwise, guys ponder and ponder and ponder. And, and, and while sometimes that might be called for or justified, you kind of take the crowd out of it. And this really should be kind of geared towards making the crowd, making it more appealing for people to watch. You're right. I always had trouble playing with a slow player. Think of poor Strickland. <laughs> yeah, he absolutely goes to the match detesting it, you know. So. Yeah, he lets you know he doesn't like it. It's a true story. All right, Chinnikov now breaking here, rack nine. He leads the match seven games to one. Get him pretty square, eight ball found the side pocket. He doesn't have a good shot on the one, though. But I'll tell you what, I, I got to bank at this. You're seeing it real well. I think you can bank at this. Yeah, the position's a little bit iffy. I think he might play a real thin cut. And safe. He's playing safe. You're yeah. Right. Yeah. Let the cue ball get right. down behind the 10. They're winning 7 to 1. Don't let the guy back in the match. Smother him. Yeah. He smothered him. Even if you leave a shot from there, just the aspect that you're playing that way means you're going to grind and fight for every ball. And that. That starts to wear on your opponent that's trailing. He wants to force the action. Here you are playing a very conservative style that's normally known to be a winning style. Oh, well, he, he's done everything wrong you could do. Yeah. You see Billy sitting next to uh, Mamboni? He's probably hoping something rubs off. <laughs> <laughs> Our Steve My colleague. friend Billy and Cardona. Chris Gentile, Shane Van Boning, all sitting in the row down there, ringside, watching the proceedings. Once again, Chinnikov comes to the table with a great open layout here. These are the type of layouts that pros feel like it's totally their fault if they don't go ahead and win. Not that things don't happen, because we know a lot of things do, but I'm just saying that he feels comfortable and confident to come perfect. to the table with a layout like this. Yeah, he got perfect. He got the angle on the three to go to the four. Look at the balls. It's a road map. Look at the four, five, six, seven. He got good, mm. I think. Did he snooker himself? He's close. Yeah, went a little further. It was one of those unusual position lines. I kind of thought he would play the four in the other corner pocket. And go two cushions rather than come down one one rail. Yeah, and there was less risk of snookering yourself, but I think he's got it. Nope. No, he doesn't. Okay, Lee Van, that was a pretty good reprieve there because it was an open layout, and just like I was saying, they're always disappointed when they don't collect those. Yep. They're so hard to earn your way in there with a good opportunity to score against another great player. World-renowned Q builder observing Mike Durbin. It's all in Illinois. He usually has a bevy of players here that play with Durbin Qs. Great guy, tremendous for the sport. Draw to the center. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, draw to the center. A little bit of uh, right-hand English. He got pretty good on this. Yeah, either angle he has, he'll be able to maneuver it. If he has the uh, slightly the wrong angle, he might go topspin and come all the way back up to the center of the table. Nope. Smarter nope. way. The Just way the settle for what he sitting, has. The way the 10 is sitting, you could afford to play the 9 up the far corner. Wisely did so. 
Provided less cue ball travel, more control. Glides the nine home. Prepares to shoot a very routine 10 ball. Wins his second game, trails in the match now. Seven to two. That will help uh, Levan's statistics. He's now 724, 896 for Chinnikov. Well above professional level play, 900 world class. Hard to produce 900s on 10 foot tables with small pockets though. Yeah, well, you're right about that. There's Kinnikov. Okay, Levan needs to be productive from the break here. He doesn't want to have to gunfight every rack with a guy that's playing one inning, ten ball. Hit the rack pretty well. Three ball, grovels home. One ball gets kissed in. Where's the two? Two's coming down the table closer to the cue ball. It's not a routine shot, but it's a it's certainly a makeable shot. That first shot, get yourself back in here now. It's a big shot. It's like you can just done across the table and play the four on the side. Oh, he played it in the corner. I think that's all he really had. I think the other one, the side pocket, if it, he only maybe had part of a pocket if he had any pocket. Lost again. Like you talk, better cue ball control. It doesn't go any, you no know, too far. That was the same type of an angle that he flinched at earlier, miss. So, but he stayed pretty still on that one. Five to the six. Did he fall too straight, Danny? He may might have, to... have. He might have to take the cut on the six. And then, yeah. of course, position gets tough. Sure does. Looks like he's, and the nine ball's kind of just won it in the middle of all that. No, he's going forward. He's going to take the cut. Okay. Oh, did he go behind the nine? I think he's oh, okay. perfect. I think he's okay. So he worked the cue ball closer. Took a little bit of risk of having the nine in play, but got the cue ball where he can control the position play to the seven easier. Triple checks his line to the seven. A little low right. Uh, undecided. Let's be not sure what's going on. Looks like somebody's got uh, a flash bulb on their oh on their phone or something. Okay, a distraction of some nature. Jay Helfert steps in, intercedes on the player's behalf. Is he going inside spin now? Coming around the table? Oh, that'd be the wrong pass. I think he can come back. Okay, I was wrong. Yeah. I was wrong. And then, but now, oh boy. Position yeah. to the eight is going to be tricky. Even Chinnikov couldn't reach this. <laughs> oh, boy. He did not have good success with the bridge on his last attempt, following the object ball into the pocket, scratching. Yeah, this would be a routine play on a nine-foot table, Danny, but once he gets a diamond past the side pocket on this big ten-footer, he made a good shot. He cheated the pocket a little to create more angle, and he got to the eight. I know Corteza hasn't given up this match yet. Oh. Well, he's going to be happy to take a little longer shot on the ten. But I imagine he's feeling good about that. And good shot there. Break and run out. Just what the doctor ordered there. 
and I think they woke up Billy and Cardona. <laughs> now he's my friend, so I could say that. When you go to your match and your opponent is not there, let us know. If you're upstairs, get on house phone, extension 6068, let us know. We'll put them on the clock. It's a 15 minute grace period. Seven three is now our score. Lee Lynn had a very productive break last time. Cruised through the rack, picked up his first break and run out of the match. That will further improve his statistical performance. Much closer to the center of the table. I don't think anything's going to go in though. Now he's yeah, hoping the two obstructs the cue ball's access to the one. It didn't. it didn't, but does the one pass? Yeah, it does. It from here, it looks like it does. All ball fouls. But look That's... at the two. If you do have a shot on the one, you're going to have trouble getting to the two. So I wouldn't shoot here. Safety is in play here. Not for him. Well, look at this. He's got a bank. Yeah, I think he felt confident he could make the one. He knew he, the cue ball would go right at the two, and then he could play safe from here, not likely to be hooked if he doesn't have a proper shot. Yeah, he's going to bank at this. Not going to make it, though. Came short, which is well, just the side that it tends to miss on. And now Lee Van's going to have a pretty nice shot on the two. Yeah, he's got to get out. A Bill. slight angle the wrong way here, Danny. So this is not the pocketing of the two that's the issue. It's getting the cue ball in some type yeah. of a place where he can make the three. And you can't stop the cue ball because the cue ball is too close to the rail to stop it. Oh, what a nice shot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect control. He worked that cue ball close. That was not easy, and he made it look very, very routine. It was awkward. He was slightly jacked up over the side pocket and had to just get past the four to the cushion and then back out. He did so. Definitely has regained a little bit of his swag that uh, was missing early in the match. Yeah. He'll only be down three games. You know, so they have the good mentality about pool. They being the Filipino players, forget the score and just get out, play every game like it's the winning game. Now, the very poor position play there. He somehow he hit the wrong side of the pocket, almost scratched in the side, and then overdrew it too. Yeah, he got plenty here. He's probably going to shoot and punish himself, but he probably should be thinking about playing safe. Just yeah, that's what I like to tell people. You already made one mistake. Don't be stubborn and, and make another one. And sometimes when you you think you're supposed to run out, you force a shot later. He's not liking this. That was a bad idea. That was a real bad idea. Yeah, he knows he was supposed to do better from what he had uh, started with and, and worked through, too. And but then, he didn't, and he made another mistake. Yeah. Don't be stubborn and make another one. Yeah, he made one bad shot and followed it up with a second bad shot. Right. It's only because you think you were supposed to run out. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's real bad now. Chinnikoff's in, pocketing the balls freely, got a shot, kind of a little bit of a reprieve. And now this is still that same circumstance where it's a huge turnaround of the score. And the momentum. Chinnikoff almost feels like he's never left the table. Everything going his way. Really helps psychologically when you feel like you're supposed to win, too. Like the pool gods are helping you, and all you got to do is kind of follow through. You don't have to do anything too fancy or anything. Just take what you're supposed to get consistently. I don't know if there's any pool gods. <laughs> yeah. In any event, Chinnikov now leads eight games to three. Chinnikov 
drop pockets on the 10 foot table here. What do you prefer, Danny, the 9-footer or the 10-footer? Well, I always say playing straight pool, I like the 10-footer. But the other games, I like the 9-footer. Yeah. All right. And I tell people, when we played straight pool on a 10-foot, you lost, you won the leg, you broke. You leave a mm -hmm. long shot to start. Yeah, that's interesting. If you win the leg in the straight pool on the footer, you always give away the break. Just because it has to be defensive. Well, it doesn't have to be, but most likely it will be defensive shot. Eight threes are our score now. Jinnikoff breaking. Hit the rack pretty nice. Not gonna make a ball though. He's not gonna have a good shot on the one anyway. Well, uh, no. He's have to shoot like inside. Off the five, you could do a lot of things yeah. here. Yeah. That's yeah, that'll open up the five also. You must shoot this off the five if you're gonna try to run out. Because the position on the two is automatic. You gotta shoot this off the five to give yourself a chance to run out. Forget last inning where you messed up. You got to not bring that into the next inning when you do something wrong. Oh, he mm -hmm. didn't hit the five. He tried to. But he's, he's in control. He can still play safe later in the rack if he gets to a spot he doesn't like. You no, know, folks, you don't always play to run out. Sometimes you play to get to the best safe. Right. That's what he's going to do here, I believe. I don't think you can go into anything here. Pretty risky. Yeah, I think it you're is. trying to force it. Yeah, that, I don't think that's the play. If you get thin on the three, you could attack the ten with the cue ball because the four is close enough. You might be able to go that way. It looks like he's going after that. Uh, no, you just play him routine position. He got position. Now he does have the angle to go after the ten if he so desires. And, and this is a straight pull shot. When you go into the ball now, the four is your insurance ball. So it doesn't look real tough. Go one rail at the 10, and you got position on the four no matter what. Oh, behind the back. What do I say now? I always say they're amphibious. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know, bad shot. Yeah, I agree. Now he's in a predicament. Now he's going to bring the cue ball over by the 10 and bank the four ball down table. And he's lining up like he wants to cut the four and go after it. Yeah, this is not good anymore because you don't have an insurance ball. No. Just don't miss the ball if you're going to play that. Yeah. He hit the ball, but it's still... He, can he play the billiard on the nine? Yeah, not easy. And hard to get a position, too. Yeah. Okay, no, it's... He tried to force something and took some risk, and then they, they landed just as awkwardly as they could have to try to return a safe. He may be forced to play a billiard on the nine, but it's a shot to nothing or a shot to a super tough shot. Yeah, he will have a shot on his combination 310. 510. 510, yeah, but, but that's no yeah, bargain. No, no He's going to play the nine, but yeah. he's not going to make it. He got lucky to miss, I think. You're right. <laughs> You'd rather have the other guy shoot from here. Yeah, this is not an easy uh, distribution of the balls for Chinnikov either. It's hard to play safe from here. Well, what do you do? You he shoot may, the combination? He, he might go soft speed and just go rail first or ball first and just try to get the cue ball lodged up on the seven. He yeah, did it. That was a good shot. Used the go. ten ball to move the five away, so that allowed him to have quite a bit of cue ball control. Well, Lee Van's going to have to make something happen here, and it's not easy. He doesn't have a good kick. It's not natural. He's going to have to go wide and spin it back with right-hand English. Don't go too wide. Well, he made it. Look at that. He Drilled got rewarded. Drilled something inside. He got this rewarded. This was a seven. Well, he didn't get rewarded real well. He has a shot. No bargain. 
But the speed plays nice to get position for the six if you do play offense here. Up shot. Very tough. He didn't even go over and look at it. So I don't think he's playing offense. Yes, he is. Like Good shot. Right home. The speed. <laughs> These guys make this temper look like a bar table sometimes. No, back behind the back. I don't know about that. I got to figure a word to call this. Perfect. Yeah, it's got the nice angle to get to the nice angle. That way you won't have to do much with the cue ball. Just top spin it down. And this is just speed control. Two cushions. Try to get the cue ball up near the side pocket. A very smooth routine 10 ball now. This will be Cortez's fourth win of the match. Trails in the match now four games to eight. Don't change, don't change the channel, folks, because Cortez has not given up. No, you wouldn't be in the top 16 guys if you had quit on you. Well, these guys don't have quit. And they've won matches from behind like this when the other guy's playing near and perfect anyway. So, A. Halford out there. A little maintenance work. Polished up the cue ball. Get some of the chalk residue off of there. I enjoyed playing on a 10-foot table, but a lot of people don't. It's too much of a test of your skills. Well, do you have a 5 by 10 table in your area? I have one in my house. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, boy. I was yeah. dumb. That's pretty near you. Yeah, it is. I don't get to use it like I would like. I do have one. Had one for many years. Cortesa. Well, you hit the rack pretty square. Anything find the pocket? I have no dry break. That's not what the doctor ordered. Open shot for Chinnikov. Fairly open layout here if he can negotiate the first couple of balls. Yeah, he's going to get position if he makes the one. Position's automatic. But this is not a gimme. Very interesting style, stance-wise, with Chinnikov, because you see very few pro players play where their shin's in front of the joint or at the joint of the cue. They're normally behind the joint. He tends to be right at the joint quite often. Good shot. We got an angle to get to the four. And he got to the four. Did he get an angle on the four to get to the five? Got pretty straight there, Danny. I don't yep. know. This is going to take a big stroke. He's shown he has the capacity to make a big stroke, but this one, Looks yeah. Straight in. It's, it's, it's straight in with maybe a hint of the wrong angle, which makes it even worse than trying to force these pockets. Oh, he's going to draw. The, we're going to see a big draw stroke here. No, we're not. We're going to see a little draw stroke. And uh, I changed it. Good judgment. Good judgment. He didn't try to overdo it. He can still f defend himself from here. There's no sense trying to make a, something that wasn't there happen. Yeah, enjoying a big stroke. The balls were in the way. And you could scratch. You can miss it. The, the pocket rejects a lot of balls. He went thin cut. He didn't cut it thin enough, and he might have scratched. Okay, that's not what he wanted to do. Leading 8-4. to four. He wanted to put a little more pressure on. Well, once again, Cortez can get within three games. You know He's not you, dead yet. Not at all. You know how you always talk about the math of, now the guy's got to beat me 10-4 to four or whatever, mm -hmm. maybe. I go the other way. I look at when I'm like, Chinnikov, I always look like this. I'm on the hill to get on the hill. You know, on the, I'm like, I try to urge myself forward yeah, here. Yeah, but my method loosens your stroke. You dog it less. <laughs> Could be. I don't see any problems here.
Nice speed. Nothing wrong here. Another opportunity to get back within three games here if we can we can go ahead and win this one. Yeah, I think he got straight in, which will leave him an angle on the nine. Get him to the ten. Oh, he's going to go forward maybe two rails. Yeah. Yeah, good call, good execution. That was a good shot. You don't want to be on the cushion, but he's not. He's in the match there, Mark. Oh, yeah, he's within six games of winning the match if he makes this 10. Ortiz now has five. Chunk off eight. We got a match. Eight to five. Got a lot of excitement to unfold with this thing. I was looking for the draw, Danny. I don't know. Did you see the draw today? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Some very interesting pairings, naturally. The rest of the day looks like this. Next up, 3.30 round to be Ercolo versus Beato. And then at the 6 o'clock round, it's U.S. Open winner Kevin Chang versus Alex Pagulayan. That's a tremendous matchup. Republic of China versus, I guess, Canada. Filipino background for Peggy Lyon. Nine o'clock round tonight to close out the day. Efren Reyes, Darren Appleton. It's a pretty quality matchup there. Then tomorrow, the proceedings kick off at noon. Neil's fine, Shane Van Boning. You can't knock any one of the matches. They're all great matches. They're all potential final matches. The taser breaks. You all drifted to the side. Made something though, right? Yes, but didn't you not get he a ball? You didn't get a shot on the one though, but. No, he didn't make anything. Okay, well, luckily he didn't get a shot on the one. So tomorrow noon, Neil's fine, Shane Van Boning, followed by Ko Pin Yi, world champion, versus Francisco Bustamante. Then it'll be Jason Shaw, John Mora, and to round out the day, 9 o'clock tomorrow night. <laughs> The two young guns on the Pro Tour, Skyler Woodward, Justin Bergman. Well, he was trying to tie balls up. He must have heard me a couple times. When you push out, it's a big advantage to tie up a ball, make the other guy have a tougher shot to run out. Good job there with the cue ball. One yep. ball hit the side, both points on the side pocket, and this is going to be a tricky ball to hit right here. Because of the two. The two entered, and now that's going to obstruct the kick. This will be a pretty kick. I think you're going to, uh, well, he maybe doesn't have to warp it all that much with draw, but he needs to have the cue ball land on the second cushion near the side pocket. Now he probably yeah. needs a little more draw there, this Danny. Judge, and he opened up the eight. It was all... A bad shot. So now Cortez could get within two games. Don't forget he was losing by seven games, wasn't he? Uh, was it eight to one? I don't think it was that dramatic. Well, let's see. Now you've quizzed me and I don't know. Well, I count on you to know, he's won. I think he's won three games in a row. But I know you do. This is not quite as mentally nimble as I once was, maybe. Pace of play has slowed down just a little bit the last couple of racks where there's been some multiple inning games. Well, nice. he's got pretty good on that. Yeah, nice ball to get there. I think he can go one rail to the four. 
got that angle. I think he can miss the 8 and the 10. And one rail to the 4. But then you need an angle on the 4 to get to the 5. Yeah, he... You know, it's hard to tell. He looks like he's queuing high. I thought he would go two cushions. No, I think he'll go one. Well, you don't... The second rail doesn't count. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Mercifully, the five ball is pretty near the corner pocket, so well, he... Well, he got good. He just has to draw the ball back now. Yeah, anything near the center of the table would be great. Otherwise, he's going to have to go all the way back. He is going all the way back. Perfect. Gorgeous shot. Very smoothly struck. Got a lot of distance on that draw. Center of the table. Lee Van, 36 years old. Davio City, Philippines. Efren, one of his great heroes growing up. Well, you folks, you see what I was talking about. Orteza has not given up. And he's going to be two games behind if he closes out here with his break. I don't know. He didn't like that too much. No, his body language suggested he felt like he got a little straight on this. Well, he's going to have to draw the ball with a little left-hand English. I think he'll be okay. Get it. Good call. Work the cue ball free of the side cushion. And he got the good angle on the nine to get to the ten. Cruise the cue ball. Perfect alignment for the ten. Sixth win on the board for Lee Van Corteza. He trails by two games. Has worked himself back into the match, but it has not been by careless shots on Chinnikov's part. He slowed down just a little bit in terms of the quality of his performance, which, you know, that could be prompted by playing on a super tight 10-foot table. However, there was a couple points in there where Chinnikov really wanted to kind of continue to put the pressure on, and uh, things escaped him just enough, and now... Did you see the TPA? Yes, I it's did. It's close. Yep. I think it was 836 to 843 in favor of Chinnikov. Errors, 13 for Chinnikov, 12 for Levan. Balls pocketed. Chinnikov has the edge there. Nine, nine balls more pocketed, 70 to 61. 8-6 is our score. And we're seeing a very competitive match now. Oh, yeah. Lee Van, very much alive. Really wants to make something on the break here, even if he doesn't get a good shot. Well got loose. Here comes the, I think that was a seven ball that found the pocket. Yeah, the seven did find a pocket. He can play safe off the one. You don't push out here. He can, he's got the two and the nine to snooker Chinnikov with. This one was predicaments where it requires a little thought. This would be one of the slowest shots we've had so far in the match. and Still only we're at 15 seconds or 20 seconds on the clock. Uh, a good decision. Got distance. UC8 is a blocker. Got a proper kick from the 10 to help. And while it won't be super difficult for Chinnikov to hit, it will be super difficult for him to play safe from. And you also don't want to hit that 3. 3-5 is... Still tied up. I wouldn't want to open that up. 
Slightly elevating, right hand spin the half mass A. Good shot perfect. there. Perfect, Great perfect. shot. Perfect. Yeah. Good billiard savvy on display there. He didn't over hit it, didn't try to do something and let the cue ball scratch. He left the hit on the one. Yeah, but what? given where he started from, I'm sure he's delighted with this result. Not bad. Oh, he shot the ball. I don't know. I think there was a borderline bad hit. Yeah, well, we should have called a referee for that one. Yeah, I, I don't know that it was or wasn't. I'm just saying Chinnikoff looked over at Jay Helford as if to say, was, it, was that a good hit? And, it was close. But Jay was not in the position to call it because he hadn't been warned to come out and make a hit call. Still got a lot of work to do. Look at the 3-5. And if the 8 gets in the way, which it did slightly... Does not help matters any. Doesn't that'll obstruct his stroke. All ball fouls here. Ten ball on the ten foot table. A real test for the pros. Single elimination. And Mark Wilson loves this. I do. Yeah, this tests all your skills. You gonna try to stun down there or is he drawing? No, he's stunning. Look outside pocket. Which side pocket? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to get close. Mm -hmm. Oh, that hurt him. He showed emotion there. It's the first time. Oh, not by much, though. I mean, he's got the good attitude. But yeah, he hates to see the score come back within Look at one him. game. You don't think that's emotion? Well, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm sure he's disappointed. <laughs> well, he was way ahead of control, and ball in hand is like the only way that makes this an easy run because the three was a problem. There's no more problem. Right now, Corteza feels like he can win this match. He might have felt that four racks ago, too. You know, we're going to be here all week. It's a nice tournament to win. You'll have eating money all week. 16000 goes to our winner. Yeah, you can eat good with 16000 cushion position. That's nice. Very all, good. All loose. Just draw the ball and try to get where you are right now. You don't need to because the eight's going to be pretty easy. Oh, he's fine here. Real solid player when you're way behind and don't give up. Yeah, conservative position routes and good decision making. Had a couple hiccups on his execution, but now he seems to be in good form. As the 10 ball goes in the pocket, Lee Van Cortez picks up his seventh game, and he's only one rack behind after being well behind earlier. He's an enormous deficit. Now he has to feel just tremendous about the energy and momentum on his side of the ledger. After 15 racks, just one game separates him. 8 7. Pretty cool matchup here. Yeah, let's see that shot that we were thinking was a little debatable on the one. Obviously a good hit. Center of the table break. Lee Van Nine makes the ball. The here comes the one. Gets an ugly kiss. Says... <laughs> Oh, boy. He made three or four balls and got the ugly kiss from the one to kiss the cue ball into the corner pocket. Yeah, well, let's see if... Uh, made three balls on the break, too, Danny. Yeah, let's see if Chinnikov is intimidated by losing the big lead. 
He really needs to respond right away here from this position because yeah. otherwise else. it's the psychological devastation that not getting out from here will cause uh, some great harm, more so than even though what the score difference will be. Yeah, pretty straight, but this should not be too bad. He can draw back with a little bit of right-hand English. So the six ball is the lime green six. Not good. Opts to play the seven in the side, but he's not going to be able to work the cue ball real close easily to the eight. He's going to have to settle for a longer cut on the eight near the pocket. Jenikoff is now going to remove the rack. You know, just say a player lightly brushed the 10 with the removal of the rack. What do you think? Is that a foul? I no. Mean, okay, yeah. I hate no, to see I don't that think happen so. too. That would change everything. You know, players would be calling someone to remove it all the time when he's already there. Uh-oh. That's what I meant. Yeah, he lost intimidation. He lost some of the smoothness on that. Yeah. There was not the pause, and the timing of that was just a little bit off. And now Levi comes to the table two balls away from tying up the match after being way behind early on. He's even got an angle here to get to the 10. Well, he could have got a little better, maybe. Yeah, it's deceptive when the, you have an optic ball hanging and you're on the opposite end of the table. Getting position is not a foregone conclusion. Oh, it's tough. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky, treacherous shot. Yeah, this is not a gimme. Not at all, no. Lee needs to maintain his good timing on this. It's the one that threatens it. He did hit the heart of the pocket, tied the match, eight games apiece. Everybody's happier. Chinnikov now considering a timeout. Now it's a race to three. Okay, everybody, we're going to take a short player five-minute timeout. When we resume, it'll be a race to three. Chinnikov has now returned to the arena. Trails in the match, eight games to eight. That's a little joke for you there, Danny. <laughs> Psychologically, maybe a little bit down. Good, Mark. You're getting witty. Oh, uh, finally. 8-8. Eight, eight. Lee Van Cortez breaking. Oh, almost got another ugly kiss. Oh, look at this. He's straight in on the one. But I don't think he made a ball, did he? He didn't. I, no, he didn't. Yeah. But now what do you do to the two? He, he looks like he's... Oh, he's got a little angle. Looks like the whole game right here is ball on the two. Yeah, it'd be a big part of it, that's for sure. Yeah. Looks like he's going to try no to draw bargain. back. Draw back two cushions. Oh, he overhit it? He doesn't like he it. He overhit it, yeah. He doesn't like it. He did not need to get that close. He just wanted to release from the second cushion, and he... he uh, he kind of struck that as if he had ample room, and it wasn't. It was a bit tighter. Now we're going to have a kicking exchange here. And the four, the two balls just far enough from the cushion. It's not that easy to kick it with accuracy. He did a nice job. Got distance and separation. Yeah, but he left it. Well, he left a shot at it. He'll be able he to hit it. He left a shot. He yeah. can hit it. I got an idea that Ivan is going to be shooting. No, I don't think Levan's going to play. I think he's going to let the cue ball go to the other side of the table and put the cue ball along the side cushion down by the four. Well, he does have a wall of balls to snook him with if he just hits it straight on. I mean, you can see he's jacked up and to try to, to play that offensively, I think it's just too much risk. Yeah, I don't know if he got him. No, he didn't get him great, that's for sure. It'd be a real routine hit. Can he play safe from here? You might be thinking about just rubbing the two ball very lightly and bringing the cue ball back where it's at now. No, he's playing a bank combination. 
second time in the match. Successfully completed. This time he just went one rail. Well, well hangs he could up. take the lead again. Get yourself together. And try to draw. Nope, two cushions. Oh, you got good on this ball. He got close, but he's got a little bit of a funny angle either way he goes. He can draw. He, I think he draw it into the side pocket. No, he's looking down the corner. Well, again, the corner doesn't get the cue ball to travel far. He yeah, scored Good that. Shot. Now he has the easy angle to go to the six. Good job handling the cue ball, not allowing it to get lodged along the cushion. For this very instance, should he fall straight, he can maneuver the to the bottom of the ball, need be. I, can, I think he's got a little angle. You were right. Watch out, Spun eight. Spun it out. This can be good speed here. Beautiful. Makes a stop shot to get to a stop shot. So very... Little cue ball travel here among the last four or five balls. That's good. Stop pool. shot gets him an angle on the nine. I tell you, this is a good out when you blew the lead so badly. Yeah, very solid run out here. Nice way to respond. And the 10 ball finds the bottom of the pocket. Chinnikoff now has nine. Lee Van Corteza, eight. Look at the TPA. Very close. It's indicative of the score. <laughs> 935 and 926. There's our rack track, so you were right. It was uh, seven games behind at one point. No, you know, six games behind. I'm sorry. Is that yeah. right? Right. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six, seven. Yeah, he won seven and then lost seven two. Seven in a row. So yeah, won so. another one and lost five. Interesting match. Yeah, you don't see the rack track look like that very often. And there is Ed Culhane. He's a character. He Always is. upbeat. Yeah, he's got an apartment where Pat has his business. On the same floor. Oh, I didn't know this. Okay, as we look on Chinnikoff to break here. Oh, he made a ball on the side. Where Ten, are you? One. Three. No, he doesn't have a good shot on Ten the one. Ten will have to spot up now. That'll make removal of the rack easy. Yeah, folks, in case you're wondering, you can't win on the break with the ten. I like that. Me too. Yeah, it's weird how sometimes it, sometimes the ten ball, the ten ball will just goes straight in the corner pocket repetitively, and then other times it will never go. Well, I got a bad taste in my mouth about making the ball on the break because I was playing Danny Gartner in a tournament in Pittsburgh, and I had him ten to five, and he made the nine on the break six in a row. So I never forgot that one. No, I would say. I played a lot of years. I never had that many happen to me. I think I've had four in a row once. And they weren't going right in the same pocket. They were going different pockets. That part is the beauty of pool, though. The randomness of odd things, peculiarities that come up. Lee Van looking to bank this straight back? No, safe. He's looking to hit Kick it. safe. And a good one. Real good job handling the cue ball. Oh, he left it. Speed, but he's got distance. This will be a big test here. Chinnikov going to have to really show us some shot making to, to make the one and get position. Yeah, you know, he's got not many obstructions. Just make the ball and go one rail at the five. Oh, he didn't want to shoot it. And that was not a good shot. He I don't think it was a fat. good. I don't think it was a good choice. It certainly wasn't well executed. You had to get distance out of that if you're going to play that shot. You got to shoot that ball. You got to shoot that ball. Well, he might not have had the right angle. You know. Oh, he had the right angle. 
Maybe we could see it again, but he played safe in a bad spot. And Cortez is going to make him pay for it. Chat there. He ball drifts home. Right down to the two. It's an interesting predicament here. You can try to follow out a long ways to get it in the corner, or you can draw back and preserve uh, uh, hitting the four ball. Whether you get a good shot is another thing. So if you go topspin, it's much more likely you get the good shot. If you draw, you probably won't hook yourself. And he's trying to go, oh, look, he drew the ball and didn't hook himself. Good job Pretty there. Good shot. A real good shot. Yeah. A world-class shot. But the Filipinos know how to play, and their judgment will, is impeccable. You know, most people would have gone one rail with a high ball, and that would have been a bigger chance to snooker themselves. So right. They went the path of less snookerdom. Did you ever hear that word before? <laughs> uh, it it explains itself. Yes, it does. Yeah, even if he didn't get a good shot on the four, he could protect himself playing it that way. Uses the eight ball to slow the cue ball progress down. Well, the only chance now that Chinnikov has is something to go wrong here because he's going to have to go two rails and avoid the pocket, which he did. And don't get straight. No, it didn't. He's got an angle to get close to the eight. That's what he did. Grabs a little powder. He's going to collect himself here. He definitely wants to capitalize now. That would tie the match up at nine games apiece. Chat there. I don't think you have to hit any rails. I think you can just draw the ball and get good. He can he can kill it or he can slide across. That's what he's weighing now. Yeah, I think it's a pull enough hit. You don't have to hit a rail, but that's no factor anyway. If he hits the rail, he'll still be good. Yeah, I was right the first time. He held it. Very smooth. Good run out there. Lee Van Corteza has nine and Ruslan Chinnikov nine. Both players on the hill to get on the hill. <laughs> Race to two. 8.40 now. Corteza, for the first time ever in the match, leads in the AccuStats, other than after the first rack. Now has moved in front, 8.40, 8.32. Very respectable scores on a tough 10-foot table. Sometimes I hear tales of back of yesteryear when pool rooms had, you know, 20 10 footers in one room or so. Yeah, we, yeah that's a long time ago. Pat. Yeah, well, it was in the 40s and 50s, I think. You know, so. And I call it, look at the way it degressed. It <laughs> went to the 9 footer and then the bar table. Nice break there by Lee Van. Pocket of the ball. I don't know. He may have a bank. That's all. Or a safety. He's asking now about the rack being removed. Remove that. Yeah, it's close. I don't know. If he has the bank, he's going to shoot it, of course. It looks like he's ready to shoot. He doesn't have the safe motion in him. No, it doesn't. It looks like he wants to shoot. 
the position will be automatic if he makes it. Look at the balls. That is truly a road map, isn't it? Well, if he can get the bank and get the position. Oh, he's shooting the bank yeah, all right. Yeah. Good shot there. Big shot. Work the cue ball close. Well done. Here comes the road map. I don't think he can just follow it ahead, or if he does, he goes to a very small position zone, Danny. He may have to stun and try to play the three in the same side pocket. I don't the know. Two's going I, in. I think with a little right-hand English, he can kill well, he it. Play to the corner. And the okay. three goes in the other pocket. Now, this is interesting. This would be a, a great time for him to pick up his second break and run out of the match. Right sure here. will be. I wouldn't bet against him doing it. You know, I don't see any big problem for a player. Draw the ball one rail. Pretty good. Got a little straight there, Danny. Oh, it doesn't matter here. So he'll draw back and play the five in the side? Yeah. Why not? Unless he can go forward. I don't know if he has the angle to go forward. I wouldn't cheat it to go forward. Just draw the ball back because of where the six is. Oh, he's hitting the rail, in fact. Well, it's hard for us to see the angle here because yeah. you can see that was effortless and, and natural. So yeah, he did that. Yeah. That's Good speed. Much better speed going forward than it is drawing a ball. We will defer to his judgment as he executed it perfectly, made that decision. Worked hard to not let up. Make sure he cashed that in after he got such a great opportunity to score. He's fine here. He's fine here. Yeah, it takes a moment to double check the angle he wants to easily transfer from 9 to 10. That's why he went and looked. He knows he can make the 6 and 9. He just wants to make it as simple on himself as possible. This will be a one cushion position. Yeah, he created an angle there. And by created, Danny means he used a little high right to make sure he had this angle. Yeah, just cinching that ball, he wouldn't have got here. Now he's got the angle to go to the 10. It's all good now as it releases from the cushion. Well, he's got a chance to get on the hill. Second break and run out of the match now for Corteza, and he regains a one-game lead, which he held after the first rack of the entire match and been trailing ever since. Ten nine is our score on the first rack, and then it took to the 19th game for him to reclaim a one-game lead. This is a great match if you're not playing in it. Mm-hmm. No, it's had a little bit of everything. A lot of There's consistency. There's Billy and Cardona. I'm sorry, Mark. I just didn't want to leave out his son, Anthony, next to him. Oh, okay. I don't think I've ever met Anthony, so. Yeah, that's, that's Billy's son. All right. Well, this will be Lee Van Cortez's last break of the match because he's on the hill to win. Yep. like to be productive here. Have something find the pocket. Get a shot or a chance to play the first safety. Three ball. Oh, yes. he made a couple. Two ball. Look at the position. It's a nine ball combination. Yeah. That's all right. Nothing wrong with this. You're not going to lose the one. No. Nope. Just takes accuracy. And this is a shot that a Filipino rotation background player. I'd be happy would. to have this on the hill. Absolutely. And they're pretty adept at controlling the one from here. Yeah. You're, you're not hitting the nine to ten. Nor too hard. So yeah. The one ball doesn't escape. The one won't go anywhere. 
you could get the nice angle from the one to transfer to the four, boy, we'd expect a second follow-up break and run out of here. But this is the shot that's going to determine that. Good shot, but he got hit a little fat and got a little straight here, Danny. Oh, he's okay. I still would rather be the shooter, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I just he's going to draw the ball. Like to draw the ball between the six ball and the side pocket over there by where he's standing. That's exactly it. He miscued. He tried to use, he flinched his bridge hand, too. I would love to see that again. Oh, that's terrible. He kind of, his whole body moved on that oh, stroke. Look at he this. found it distasteful. We're in danger of seeing a hill-hill match. Oh, he wants to bite his tongue. What happened there? He miscued? But he hit the ball. <laughs> yeah, he's lucky yeah. he hit the ball. Yeah, very much so. The, the low left English. Nice Pretty cut good there. Shot. Wow. Left handed. Where wow. are you, cue ball? Very good shot. He's fine. Very good shot. It was. I'm very happy to have it. Uh, we saw a stroke mechanics breakdown there, and that's right when they crop up when you feel pressure. He was not liking uh, drawing back. He felt like he was supposed to make it, but he also knew that it had some risk, and he kind of flinched at it. Yeah. Body moved, the bridge hand moved. And what Mark is saying, there's many ways to dog it. Well, what I'm really saying is I can tell when you're scared or you don't like the shot because your confidence erodes enough that your mechanics follow suit. Well, I don't know why you would be scared. You finally got to where you could win the match. Well, now it's going to be perfect yeah. for the audience. Both players suffering. And big momentum change here. Chinnikov was thinking he might lose the match without coming back to the table. Instead, we're now tied 10 games apiece. One rack for who moves on. Let's take a look at our stats there. 844, 842. That's what, that's what produces 10-10 matches. Amazing, right? Really is, yeah. We watch 50 <laughs> years of pool, and that comes up. After eight racks, it was 7-1, to one, and now here we are, 10-10. After 20 racks. Looked like Lee Van Corteza was going to break and run out the last two racks. He really did in a very doable position there. He'd like to have that one back. And not likely to get a shot that good again. It's an amazing first rack, a first match you yeah. folks are witnessing. Very entertaining. Hey, Cortez is laughing. Well, yeah, I mean, you always can't cry. You got to play this last rack. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm different. I would cry. <laughs> <laughs> you said why? Well, never mind. He's laughing. Well, they got great attitudes. You don't get this place by not being bruised and battered in every fashion along the way. So. You mean that's happened before? It has. You think he's miscued on the game ball? I think uh, many of the time. Over the years, he plays as much pool as he has. Okay, here we go. 10 10s our score. Chinnikov breaking. Final rack action. 16 players began the tournament. This is the first round. One will be eliminated. One will move on. Chinnikov has made a ball. The one ball gets kissed right into the corner pot. No, he did not make a ball. He didn't. Oh, that's no. a big difference. Boy, I thought I saw something dart in. Well, Cortez, you got a chance again to miss Q on the game ball. Yeah, he's roughing up his tip right now <laughs> as we speak. Yeah, I don't blame <laughs> him. This is a tricky position play here now, Danny, because that one's so deep in there. I don't know. Oh, you got the easily, rail. You well, got the rail. At this angle, speed, you got I'm the rail. I'm saying the speed of that, it comes off so hot. It's, it's tricky. It's not that, it's not routine. 
But Nathaniel, I'm not saying he won't get it, and I'm not saying he won't succeed, but that cue ball's going to be mighty hot when it comes off of that one ball. It will be, but it's not that thin a hit off the rail. Diamond table allows that ball to get deeper into the pocket. These shots, they don't come up all the time. And he's kind of surveying what, what he can do here. Oh, he's got a big rail first. I think he's looking to play ball first just for more control. Yeah, ball first. And well, he this. didn't get much control. No. Nope. I like rail first. You don't have to shoot as hard, but like you said, it would be very hot. But right now, look oh, at this. Oh, he's got to hate it. Yeah, that really hurts. That does. That hanging ball is not an easy ball to play position from, and it's so yeah. deceptive because you know you can make the ball, but getting position is quite another thing, and it's you let down. Tough. Yeah, it is. And the ball's in that deep. It's tough to get position off it. And, and he just, you know, he's a champion, and he just demonstrated he's, how tough it is. Hit the very first ball he came to. I mean, he didn't even get negotiate the first one, let alone problems down the way, you know, so. I think he used bad judgment. I think you got to go rail. Well, he's hit the two. He's going to he leave a shot. Out. He yeah. sold out. Now it's all in Chinnikov's hands. He can capture this match without ever having uh, Cortez ever have any input into the rest of this rack. And now he is not laughing anymore. He's, he's certainly disgusted. concerned. And, uh, I'm not sure what happened there. There's some kind of issue with the shot clock or something. Huh? Okay. Jesus. He's... Maybe complaining about the shot clock, but he's really disappointed with himself getting bad position is what he's oh, really no. saying. Yeah, he, he used his extension after the break, and he was forced to shoot maybe quicker than he wanted to. We can find a lot of excuses, but the whole thing is he had a chance to win the match two games in a row, and he... He managed to find a way to not win them. But he didn't lose this one yet. I mean, no. 10-10, ten, ten, there's all kinds of pressure and awkwardness that can happen. Yeah. Look where the 7 is. Do you play for the 6 to go to the 7 in the side? Oh, it's not over yet. Oh, he made it a little difficult now to get position. He's got that big stroke, though. Which side of the six ball will the cue ball go on? Can he Might go right five? behind it. I think he's going to play a speed that that's not going to happen. Good stroke Good there. Good shot. Yeah. Handled it nicely, and the cue ball did not get lodged up on the cushion. Scary point in the rack here, getting from the six, seven, and eight. Good speed there as he drifts the cue ball up there. Nice. Yeah, so he can... he's got the angle to go to the side or even the corner. The same corner as he's shooting now. He's so got an angle to do that. He does not want to play a position where he allows the cue ball to bump the nine when he pockets oh, the no. seven. He can hit center ball with a little speed and go one rail, get to the uh, seven in the same pocket he's shooting. Yeah. Oh, that's no good. <laughs> that's what I meant. He didn't want to pocket the seven and have the cue ball hit the nine after he hits oh, it. Oh, that's terrible. Now you got to rely on your billiard, a billiard ability. Oh, he's playing safe. Okay. I don't know. Well, I'm just saying. That that yeah, makes, he's playing safe. Is he going to get it? He's not making one bad shot and following it up with yet another. I think he like left the hit on it. He did. Not a great shot, but he left the hit. But he didn't do something stupid. Just give it away. Force something to win there. He's a little dissatisfied. Lee Van. <laughs> he feels fortunate to come back to the table, I'm sure. He can play offense here, Danny, because he can pick up a backdoor safety if he misses. And yeah, he knows I don't this like shooting here. I don't like shooting. Well, I do. I play to overcut it slightly and just take yeah, my chances. Yeah, where's the cue ball going? You're going to go down by the eight. Might go in the pocket, too. Oh, he way overcut it. Oh, he's going to be all right, I think. That's what I mean. You get the backdoor safety so often playing say or playing offense there. He's laughing because he knows he way overcut the ball, but still worked out. Chinnikov going to have to kick two cushions, try to make a full hit and stick the cue ball, or can he hit the seven straight on? No, I think it's two cushions. 
Yeah, two missions. You sold out. Maybe. Yeah, he did. Still. Oh, yeah. You when gotta, you didn't get out two in a row, this doesn't look so easy. No, and you got to roll it or else stun it and try to play it two cushion. I mean, this is certainly a missable shot. This is a spot shot virtually for the game. The shot you're supposed to get, but it's missable and it's awkward. And yeah, he's got you, an awkward you bridge. A, and, it's, and it's a, a 10 foot. footer. With, <laughs> you got to roll this. You can't shoot it with speed. You know, you got to roll this in. Well, look at it. He's having an awkward time getting his bridge hand down. He's yeah. chose about six different bridge lengths, and now it looks like he's trying to stun it. No, rolling. He connected on that, Danny. Oh, he hit it good. Oh, perfect angle, too. It's a tough shot, a shot. To, to roll in. Under the pressure, and after all the misfires along the way, now he's in perfect alignment here. There he is. Automatic position to the nine. You know, and you've seen Lee Van in the same spot many times in this tournament where you say, well, he's just 50-50 to win this match. But he always gets in the top four. He's finished second twice in this event. Somehow he just gets there. He's a great player. That's why he gets there. Yeah, he was trailing in this match 7-1. to one. One ball away now. Match ball here in front of him. Chinnikov uh, has to feel like he let one get away there. He was way in front. And uh, a good hard-fought grinding victory here for Corteza. Been a very entertaining match for everyone on behalf of Mark Wilson and Danny DiLiberto. So long for just a while.